Hello, today is our third lecture and the topic is the topic is general virology. At previous two lectures we studied mostly prokaryotes, bacteria, and now we'll study a cellular organisms which name it viruses. Here you see the lecture schedule. We start with definition of viruses, the difference between viruses and other live microorganisms. We will study the morphology and structure of viruses, their classification, their reproduction, the type of interaction of, between virus and host cell. And the special question is bacteriophages, is the viruses of bacteria. We will study uh, the morphology and structure, the difference between virulent and temperate phages, and the practical use of bacteriophages in the medicine. And what is the viruses exactly? Viruses are cellular organisms. Uh, they have their own genome, which consists of nucleic acids, and they can replicate only inside host cell. They have no own metabolic system. They use metabolic system of host cell uh, to um, produce the all components of a viral particle named virion. And here you see the main properties of viruses. They inert, filtrable agent. Inert, that means they have no uh, any metabolic activity, no movement like all other live creatures. They are composed of nuclear protein, the complex of molecules. And filtrable means that they can come through uh, bacterial filters. They're very small. Bacteria are obligate intracellular parasites, so they cannot multiply outside the host cell. They cannot produce energy, and they, they're unable for uh, biosynthesis. They use only host cell metabolic system. Their genome is uh, very special. Uh, it may be present, presented with RNA or DNA, and no one virus contains both types of this nucleic acid. Uh, in the structure, virus have a naked capsid or envelope with attached protein, and they cannot multiply by division. They have special type of multiplication named reproduction. Here, can you see the uh, size and shape of viruses? The, the single uh, particle of virus named virion, it's infection, it's the mature form of virus. In this form, they exist outside the cell and compare the size of viruses and cellular organisms. Here you see the human cell with erythrocytes. We can see only part of it. Here's the typical prokaryotes, E. coli. And uh, there are the um, variants of different viruses. Some of them larger, like this Ebola virus or vaccine virus. Uh, their size is similar to the size of smallest uh, prokaryotes like chlamydia and other viruses much smaller like adenoviruses, rhinoviruses, coronaviruses and others. All this is the virions. In this form they um, may be found outside the cell. Inside cells they cannot see the structure. And what is the structure of viruses? They have no cellular structure, no membrane, no nucleus, no any organelle inside. Exactly, they have only nucleic acids, also named viral core. Capsid, it's a nucleic acid here. Capsid, it's a protein shell surrounded this nucleic acid. And some of viruses also have the third component named envelope. And let's characterize all these components of uh, typical virion. All viruses possess the nucleic acid, its viral core, it's a viral genome, uh, it's um, located in the center of virion. The function of nucleic acid is heredity and variation, and also it's responsible for infectivity. Responsible for infectivity means if we isolate the nucleic acid from a virion and insert it artificially into host cell, the viral infection starts, it's enough for infection only this genetic program of virus. Uh, the structure of the viral genome is very diverse. You see in all cellular forms of uh, organism, only molecule of DNA 
is responsible for heredity and uh, variability, but in viruses, it may be DNA or RNA. Normally, in cellular organisms, all DNA is only double strain, but in viruses, it may be double strain or single strain structure. Other viruses have a RNA as a genome. Normally, in the eukaryotes and prokaryotes, RNA is only single strain, but in viruses, may be single or double strain. In the structure of viral genome, it may be circular, like in prokaryotes, or linear, like chromosomes in uh, eukaryotes. Mostly viruses have a single molecule of RNA or single molecule of DNA, but sometimes their genome is multiple. For example, in HIV virus, it contains uh, two uh, fragments, identical fragments of RNA. In the genome of influenza virus, we find eight fragments of RNA, the multiple genome of virus. Uh, the next component of viral particle is a capsid. It's a protein shell coat, which encloses the nucleic acid, um, protects the viral genome. Inside is a nucleic acid, and this is a capsid. It's composed of protein subunits named capsomeres, and they arrange it in some order um, around the nucleic acid. And the viral capsid may have helical types of symmetry, like this, or cubic or icosahedral type of symmetry. The function of capsid is protection. It protects the nucleic acid from uh, all factors of environment and participate in viral infection. This capsid serves to transport the viral DNA or RNA inside cell and also share antigenicity because this protein of virus, they are antigen and they can interact with the immune system of human body. If virus have only nucleic acid and capsid, this virus Naked, naked virus. It uh, has no envelope. Uh, this kind of virus is stable in uh, environment. Uh, they're resistant for drying, for acids, for detergents, for heating, for some extension. Uh, when this virus infects cell, uh, it causes the lysis and the cell death. Uh, due to their resistance, uh, the naked viruses can infect gastrointestinal tract because they survive in acid and bile in the human uh, stomach or uh, intestine. Uh, they be, can be easily spread with hands, dust, fomites, with food products. It's a typical way of transmission for this virus. And uh, neutralizing antibodies, mucosal and systemic are important uh, to control this infection. Some viruses have envelope, not of all of them. Naked virus have no, and if virus have it, it's named envelope. Envelope. What is the composition of envelope? It's the uh, lipids, phospholipids, which are very similar to lipids of cellular membrane, membrane of host cell, and it also contains the glycoproteins, which encoded this viral genome, control it with the viral gene. The um, enveloped virus acquire it due to um, during the maturation. When they leave the host cell, they take the part of cellular membrane and uh, it serves as the envelope for this virus. Uh, the function of envelope is not protective. Uh, this um, phospholipid membrane is very fragile. It easily destroyed with uh, acids or detergents or high temperature, so enveloped virus is less resistant than naked viruses. Their main functions is antigenicity. This uh, viral specific proteins are antigens, and uh, it's important um, in infectivity. It serves, this glycoprotein serves for attachment uh, to the membrane of host cell. And here you see the schematic diagram of enveloped virus, and here is the electronic micrograph of real enveloped virus at the surface simplex virus. Here is its capsid containing a DNA 
and it's surrounded with envelope, which is actually the part of cell membrane, membrane of host cell, and uh, you see the inserted like a proteins, the viral specific proteins. And what is the properties of enveloped viruses? They're not resistant in the environment, they damage drying, the acids, detergents, heating. Uh, in the maturation, they pick the pick up the part of cellular membrane, and the, the envelope contains viral specific proteins, and the, they released by budding from the host cell in their multiplication. And this kind of viruses never infect gastrointestinal tract. For the transmission, they need to be protected with some biological uh, fluids like blood or mucus or saliva. In this way, they can survive for some time. Here you see the example of uh, enveloped virus. It's the rabies virus. It can be transmitted with the saliva of uh, um, infected animal. It is transmitted with uh, animal bites. And for control of this virus, the humoral and cell-mediated immunity is important. And uh, this slide summarizes uh, the structure of uh, virion. In their type of symmetry, they may be cubic or helical, and this structure is characteristic for naked viruses. Naked virus contains only nucleic acid, it may be DNA or RNA, and structural proteins, which form the capsid. Uh, and sometimes uh, they also have uh, the enzymes inside, enzymes which are important uh, for production of new copies of the nucleic acid. And enveloped viruses have the same nucleic acid, capsid, and the third component is the envelope, which contains lipid bilayer and uh, structural proteins and glycoproteins. For classification of viruses, um, we take into account um, the presence or absence of envelope, the type of the nucleic acid, some of them are DNA genome, others RNA genome, the structure of this nucleic acid, is it double strain or is it simple strain? Other important properties for classification is the antigens of these viruses and who is the host of virus. Some viruses can infect human and animal cell. Other viruses are phytopathogenic, so they cause disease in plants and the uh, bacteria also have their special viruses named bacteriophages. And bacteriophages cannot multiply in human cell or plant cell. Human viruses cannot cause infection in plants or in bacteria. So these viruses are very specific um, to the host cell. And here you see the uh, main taxonomic or systematic groups of viruses. They divide into species, genus, family, and order, like uh, all other organisms. Mm -hmm. Typical virus possesses a nucleic acid, protein shell, and sometimes envelope, but there are mm, some infectious agents with a simpler structure. They are viroids, it's a small circular molecule RNA and this zero-like structure, and uh, they have no capsid, no envelope, and they mostly phytopathogenic because disease in plants, non pathogenic for human. And the prions is the infection protein. Uh, they doesn't possess nucleic acid. Uh, their synthesis control with cellular genes, and the normal, um, Proteins may be present in uninfected cells, but they turn into prions after contact with this infection protein. Prions associated with some important human disease like creatsfeld jakob disease, also named spongiform encephalopathy. And here you see the electronic micrograph of these uh, proteinal structures, it's the prions, in the 
cells of brain and they destroy the cells and cause this incurable disease, form encephalopathy. Viruses cannot multiply this, this binary fusion. They uh, have the special type of reproduction. It's uh, illustrated with this slide. This is their uh, obligate intracellular parasite. They use the uh, cellular metabolic system for their reproduction. And they have a special growth cycle, which starts with attachment of virus to the cell surface, then penetration of virus, um, and it loses their protein shell. And uh, then the synthesis of viral DNA or RNA and viral protein start. And uh, then you see the maturation, the assembly of new virions and the release from the cell. And more detail about main steps of viral reproduction. The first step is the att attachment or adsorption. A virus attached to the uh, cell surface. It is the interaction between some viral receptors and cellular receptors. Viral receptors in naked viruses is the proteins of the capsid in enveloped viruses is the glycoproteins of envelope. Um, virus can um, attach to the cell surface if it possess the special receptors. It may be proteins or carbohydrates or sometimes lipids. If cell have no this uh, receptor, the virus cannot attach to it. Um, for example, uh, HIV virus uh, can attach only to CD4 receptors, which are present in the surface of T helper cell and macrophages, the cells of the immune system. So this virus infects only this kind of cell in the human body. The next step is penetration. After attachment to the cellular membrane, um, virus activates this membrane and uh, it engulfs the virus and forms the vacuole around it, this process named endocytosis, and take the virus into cytoplasm. And then virus release from the vacuole to the cytoplasm of infected cell. Uh, this uh, way of penetration is characteristic for small naked viruses. For enveloped viruses, it's a bit different. Enveloped viruses have envelope, which is very similar in the its chemical structure to the cellular membrane. And it's possible the um, fusion of uh, envelope and uh, membrane. And the central part of virion is its nuclear capsid is released into cytoplasm. And at this step, when virus invade cytoplasm, the cell stops synthesis of their own proteins own DNA and start to produce only new viruses. And you see attachment, then penetration, and next step is uncoating. It mediated with some cellular proteins, they open up the capsid, the nucleic acid to release and transport it into um, nucleus of host cell. At this step of viral reproduction, the virions cannot be found inside the cell on the separated molecule of virus, and this phase named eclipse, so no viruses. And the next processes is genome synthesis, production of um, messenger RNA, and synthesis of necessary viral protein. And uh, then all structural components come together at the one side of the cell, sometimes in cytoplasm, sometimes in nucleus, like for this uh, herpes simplex virus. And the uh, um, capsomers form uh, the capsid according the type of symmetry of this virus. And uh, this process named assembly. assembly. And uh, then new viruses leave the cell with different uh, um, ways. If an infection caused with a naked virus, um, the release is uh, 
looks like disintegration, naked virus causes the lysis of host cell. If infection causes this enveloped virus, you can see the budding, budding the new viruses through the cellular membrane. And uh, in this process, uh, the cell is cell doesn't uh, die immediately, but uh, uh, eventually it dies due to uh, damage of the metabolic process in it and uh, accumulation of toxic product. After virus infect the cell, the three types of viral replication are possible. Mm, mature virions may be produced, it's a productive infection, or we see production of defective virions, it named it abortive infection, or it's also possible the integration uh, of virus and the host cell. Productive infection start from attachment of viral to the cellular membrane and uh, finish in release of new viruses, complete progeny of new viruses and cell death. It's more characteristic for acute viral infections. In abortive infection, uh, the viral reproduction um, is damaged in uh, some step of replicative cycle. It is not biosynthesis of proteins or nucleic acid or assembly of virions is damaged. And instead, uh, complete virions from defective forms may be released. For example, in uh, people with uh, chronic hepatitis B, we can find in their blood uh, so-called uh, Australian antigen. It is uh, uh, empty capsids of hepatitis B virus, which don't contain uh, the nucleic acid. As a result, it is a result of abortive infection. And the third type uh, of interaction between virus and host cell is the integration. When viral genome or its part insert into cell chromosome, like in this slide. It's characteristic for HIV virus. It turn into provirus inserting themselves into um, human chromosome. And this process, uh, this latent infection may last uh, some years before virus activates and uh, um, the symptoms of HIV develop. Many other viruses have the same property. They can interact with chromosome of uh, host cell, like herpes viruses, adenoviruses, papilloma viruses. And what is the result of integration of virus into human chromosome? It can turn normal cell into a cancer cell. Many kinds of cancer are associated with certain types of viruses. How can we cultivate viruses in laboratory for diagnosis of viral diseases? Viruses are obligate intracellular parasites so they cannot be cultivated in nutrition media like bacteria. We need uh, live cell for their multiplication. And uh, there are three main objects for cultivation of viruses. It may be um, tissue cultures. Uh, the um, cells taken from human body or animal body can survive in proper condition in laboratory and uh, produce the uh, cell monolayer in the, this um, glass vessel in special nutrition media for cells produces monolayer. And then we can infect it with viruses. Virus multiply inside cell, cause some changes in their morphology. And in this way, we can indicate the presence of viruses in infected material. Very convenient object for viral cultivation is embryonated eggs, the chicken embryo. Uh, some viruses multiply in Corian allantois cavity, others in uh, amniotic cavity, and uh, some kinds of viruses multiply better in the surface of membranes of this embryo. And for some viruses, we use uh, the laboratory animals as, as objects for cultivation. Some viruses uh, pathogenic for human and uh, animals, but some human 
viruses cannot cause disease in animal in natural conditions. Uh, for this purpose, we use special lines of laboratory animals like these mice, which um, have no thymus, have no thymus, have no immunity, so viruses multiply in their body. And the special type of viruses is the bacteriophages or just phages. Bacteria are parasites of humans, but they have their own parasites, the bacteriophages, their own viruses. But all bacteriophages is obligate intracellular parasites. They multiply inside bacteria and they use their biosynthetic machinery for multiplication. Bacteriophages may contain double strain or single strain DNA or RNA, uh, like other viruses. The type of symmetry may be helical, cubic, and complex, and bacteriophages never have the envelope. In this electronic micrograph, you see the cell of bacteria, the staphylococcus, and the bacteriophages which attack the cell, all these dark spots also bacteriophages. Here you see the possible morphology of phages. Some of them thread-like, this uh, helical type of symmetry. Other spherical, this cubic type of symmetry, like a sidereal type of symmetry. And some bacteriophages have the tail, and the type of symmetry is complex. It's uh, cubic in their head and helical in their tail. And here you see the schematic diagram of structure of typical bacteriophage. It has DNA like a genome with some modified bases in it, and the head with cubic symmetry, necklace collar, sheath and the tail fibers is important for attachment of virus to the bacterial cell. And the, at the bottom is the base plate. And the protein or other components, except this, uh, composite of uh, proteins. And their function is protection and transport of DNA uh, to the bacterial cell. Uh, there are two main types of bacteriophages according to the strategy of interaction um, with bacterial cells. Some bacteriophages named lytic or virulent. They infect bacterial cells, multiply in it, and cause the death of this bacteria, cause it lysis. Other bacteriophages are lysogenic or temperated. They can multiply in bacteria causing this lysis, but sometimes they insert the DNA into bacterial chromosome and turn into non-infection form named prophage. And to, what are the steps of multiplication of virulent phage? It named the uh, lytic cycle of phage. The first step, uh, the same as in multiplication of human viruses, is the attachment of virion to the cell. Bacteriophage use these tail fibers for attachment to the cell of bacteria. In gram-negative bacteria, uh, the cells interact with lipopolysaccharides. In gram-positive, in tachoic acid, or um, sometimes um, pili may serve as receptors for, for attachment of bacteriophages. Uh, the next step is the entry of viral nucleic acid into bacterial cell. After attachment, this sheath contracts and injects viral nucleic acid into bacterial chromosome. All this protein code uh, stay outside the cell and it doesn't participate in the next steps of viral reproduction. And compare in human viruses, uh, the nucleic acid and capsid come into cytoplasm in bacteriophages, only nucleic acid without, without protein. When viral 
nucleic acid and the cytoplasm. The early viral proteins start to synthesize. They're important for replication of viral genome. And uh, then bacterial uh, enzymes make many copies of genome or bacteriophage. And then late proteins synthesize. Late proteins, the element of capsid. And here you see the assembly of progeny, progeny virions. All the components together and form new bacteriophage. The, uh, the final step is the release of infectious progeny virions. At the late stage, uh, step of replication, the special enzyme lysozyme accumulates inside bacterial cell and dissolves the peptidoglycan for the lysis of cell and release new virions, which can infect new bacterial cell. For temperate phages, the interaction with bacteria is completely different. After injection of uh, viral nucleic acid, it integrates itself into bacterial chromosome. This bacteria don't die. It um, continues to grow. It multiplies, and uh, all daughter cells also have this prophage in uh, their genome. So phage continue to multiply, but the multiplication depend on multiplication of this bacteria. And this diagram illustrates um, the way in which viral DNA incorporated into uh, bacterial chromosome. For human cells, the presence of viral genome is harmful. It um, causes uh, oncogenic transformation of cells. But for bacteria, presence of bacteriophage is useful. If bacteria have this prophage in its chromosome, it um, acquires something like immunity uh, for other phages, similar phages. And species without this prophage, they sensitive to, to this phage. Sometimes the prophage can disattach itself from bacterial chromosome. It includes on physical and chemical factors which damage the DNA and it turns into infection form. And the uh, lytic cycle of viral multiplication starts. This cell dies and release new viruses, which can infect cell around it. But if this cell have prophage, this phage cannot infect it. And if uh, the bacteria of other strain present here, this bacterial phage kills them. Bacterial culture containing prophage named lysogenic, so uh, it can undergo the spontaneous lysis. And if uh, prophage present in bacterial chromosome, this bacteria mm, acquire new properties. The viral genes change the property of bacteria, change their phenotype. And uh, it's uh, named lysogenic or phage conversion. For example, in important human pathogen, Carine bacterium diphtheria, the toxin production is controlled not with the bacterial genome, but the genome of a temperated phage. Only lysogenic strains of Carina bacteria are pathogenic. In salmonella, the modification of antigen also um, associated with uh, the presence of some kind of prophages in their chromosome. Uh, sometimes uh, temperated phages can transfer a part of bacterial chromosome from one cell to another. And this process named transduction, and we will study it a bit later in our next lecture, uh, topic the bacterial genetics. And why bacteriophages is so important for us? Why is it important in medicine? What is their practical application? 
um, the usage in medicine is possible due to high specificity of bacteriophages. They can, can multiply only in bacterial cell and moreover in bacteria of certain genus, certain species or strain. So we can use them for indication of pathogenic bacteria in environment or in clinical samples. Uh, we um, take the tested material and we don't know if pathogenic bacteria present or absent in it. And we can add the suspension of bacteriophages, specific bacteriophages, and we know how many bacteriophages is here, and mix it with bacterial culture, wait some hours, and then count the number of bacteriophages. If it increases, it means that pathogenic bacteria are present in the tested material. Uh, phage typing mm, widely is widely used in laboratory for identification of bacteria. Different bacteria susceptible for different bacteriophages. And uh, in this test, we do the inoculation of uh, bacterial culture in the petri dish and um, divide it into many sections <coughs> and apply different bacteriophages in each section. And next day, we can see if bacteria are susceptible for this phage or not. If bacteria are susceptible, we see a sterile spot, <coughs> uh, the zones of bacterial lysis, and so we can know which bacteria we isolate. And the uh, other way in which we can use the bacteriophages in medicine is the phage therapy or phage pro prevention of diseases. Um, it's uh, especially useful in treatment of infec uh, infection caused with bacteria resistant for antibiotics like staphylococci or pseudomonas or klebsiella. Uh, for um, patients with uh, such disease, we apply the suspension of bacteriophages into mucosa or into wound surface, and bacteriophages find this pathogenic bacteria, infect them, and cause their lysis, lysis and they never cause the harm for human cells because they're specific uh, to multiply only in bacteria. So we can use bacteriophages for immunocompromised person, for small children, and uh, this medicine never um, causes the side effects in human. And uh, there is a uh, all I want to tell you about viruses. If you have any questions, you may ask me in our practical classes next week. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>